Good afternoon, darlings and deviants. My name is Lucy, and I'm just a little loony. While Magic the Gathering will always hold a special place in my heart, I love looking at other card games from time to time and expanding my horizons. I've played Yu-Gi-Oh, I've played Digimon and Flesh and Blood, but recently that mischievous little mouse that goes by the name of Mickey has been cooking up something by the name of Lorikana. And the rules of the game recently... I think they were officially released, I don't think this is a leak, so I can talk about this, and I want to take a look at it. See some of the biggest differences between it and magic on... Speculate on if it's gonna kill magic! Uh, uh, spoiler alert, it's, it's not. Don't be silly. Anyway, without further ado, let's start the show! In Lorikana, you take the role of an Illumineer in the realm of, you guessed it, Lorikana. You have the power to wield magical ink and bring classic Disney characters to life. However, these aren't all exactly the characters you know and love. These characters, these glimmers, are slightly different. Some look a bit familiar, and some are downright improbable. Glimmers will help you quest alongside other Illumineers and help you find the lost lore of Lorikana. A lot of lore in this game, I suppose. Leading into that, the main goal of Lorikana is to get to 20 lore counters before your opposing Illumineer. It's akin to some European board games where, rather than lowering your opponent's life total to zero, you want to reach a certain number and get a certain amount of a thing. To get there, you'll mainly be using your glimmers, your characters, to quest for lore. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a look into the anatomy of a character card and some of the mechanics while we're at it and explain it along the way. Let's look at Tinkerbell, Tiny Tactician. Looking up in the upper left there is the cost. That is how much ink you need to pay in order to play it. Well, what's ink? Well, it's the resource system for Larkana. Once during each of your turns, you can take one card from your hand, show it to your opponent so you can both make sure that it has the inkwell icon, that little, uh, that little swirly thing next to the hexagon, and put it face down into your inkwell, where all your ink goes. To pay cost, you exert, or tap if you're a Magic the Gathering player, ink until you pay the total cost. So going back to Tink here, she costs 3 ink to play, and once it's paid, you have to wait for the ink to dry so it's effectively stunned for a turn. Psst. This is summoning sickness for Magic the Gathering people. Moving on, we have some pretty well known stuff. We have names and classifications. These only really matter in terms of gameplay if another card says they do. And uh, while I'm at it, keep in mind that you can have four copies of any one individual card in your deck. And keep in mind, that's not character specifically, it's only the cards. If you had two different versions of Mickey Mouse, for instance, you could run up to four copies of either of them. It's the card that matters, not the character. Moving below that, we have the ink color. There are six total ink colors, amber, emerald, sapphire, amethyst, ruby, and steel. We're not entirely sure what the mechanics are of each color yet, but the important thing here is that a deck can only have two colors. No mixing and matching like in Magic, only two. You can have only one a mono ink deck, but two is the max. Off on the other side of the card, we have strength and willpower. To put this simply, strength is the damage a character can deal, and willpower is the damage a character can take. Tink here can deal two damage and take four during a challenge. Well, what's a challenge? If your character's ink is dried and your opponent has an exerted character, you can challenge. Exert your character, then the two deal their strength to each other's willpower. So for example, Tink would deal two to another character's willpower, and they would deal their damage to her willpower. Damage is permanent in Lorcana as well, so don't forget to mark the damage. Moving into the fancy yellow box here, we have abilities and effects. Some are static effects, or there are some keywords. There's way too many of those for me to list, and the Sorta of Quick Rules Primer didn't really cover all of them. Uh, so in the words of the Telerian Community College, reading the card explains the card. Make sure to read your card's abilities carefully so you know what it does. Tink here, for instance, has the ability Battle Plans, which lets you exert her to draw a card and then discard a card. But what about that little diamond on the right? Well, my dear audience, that is a character's lore value, and that's where the main part of the game comes in. Any character can, if their ink is dry, go on a quest. Go ahead and exert them, and then you gain the lore equal to their lore value. So if Tink here goes on a quest for me, I'd get one lore. 
And don't forget, once the player is at 20 lore counters, they win. So that's the characters and the basics of the game. So what about the other card types? Well, there's two at the moment, items and actions. Cost is the same and a lot of the same rules apply. The main difference between these is that items, like characters, stick around in play, whereas actions are one and done. Like characters, take a look in the ability box to know what's going on. This action in particular, one jump ahead, is a song. Songs are actions that have an ink cost, but if you have a character with the appropriate cost, in this case two, you can exert that character instead of paying the cost. Keep in mind, you do still need to wait for the character's ink to dry to exert. That rule is the same no matter what. And that's the main rules of Lorcana. The game keeps going back and forth with players building up their ink wells and gathering lore until somebody hits 20 lore counters. A bit more rules. To start the game, each player draws 7 cards and can choose to mulligan. Mulliganing is done by replacing any number of cards in your hand by putting them on the bottom without revealing them, then drawing that many. Keep in mind, you can only do this once. Then, the players determine who goes first. Notably, this is done after your hand is settled, unlike a lot of other games where you know beforehand who's going first while you're mulliganing. Finally, deck building. Like I mentioned before, a deck can have at most two ink colors, a deck must have at least 60 cards in it, and you can have a max of four of any particular card. Pretty simple stuff, honestly. Pretty common with how most games work. And that's the game. I'm looking forward to learning more and you can expect more Lorcana content on this channel as well as my normal magic stuff. The pros of being an interdimensional ring mistress means I'm not quite bound by your typical restrictions of creativity. In other words, honk you I do what I want. But to the point of the video, will Lorcana kill Magic the Gathering? Um, no. No it won't. Anyway, thank you so so very- Okay, okay, let me elaborate. Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Hearthstone, Digimon, One Piece, Pokemon, Card Fight, and so on and so forth. There's so many card games. All of these games have their own draws, their own pros and cons, and Lorcana is no different. Believe me, I'm adoring what the game looks like. I can't wait to get my hands on it. And I think a company like Disney can really support it well and maybe have a cool competitive scene along with a thriving casual market. I'd love to go to a Lorcana one day. Eh, get it? But seriously, the one thing that's going to kill Magic the Gathering is itself. It's still one of the most versatile card games out there with tons and tons of ways to play the game, officially, not to mention the unofficial ways to play. I mean, people made an entire format with a shared deck based around a fish. A fish! That's wild. Magic is immortal. As long as the wizards running it don't get too greedy. Some people think it's already there, but I'm a bit of a hopeful optimist, so I think everything's gonna be A-OK. -okay. But hey, what do you think? What are your thoughts about this brand new card game? Do you want to see more content about it, or do you really only care about magic stuff? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And hey, while you're there, be sure to drop me a like and a subscribe so that Alan the Algorithm Beast can survive through the winter. Thank you all so 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 very much for watching, and until next time, au revoir!